So my wife and I are going to a big party tonight, which, although we're very excited about, also means that there's going to be hordes of delicious food laid out in front of us, and I have learned long ago that I'm totally powerless in front of a bowl of Doritos or Cheese Whiz or salsa with Doritos or pretty much anything um, along those lines. And uh, so does that mean that necessarily that's going to all go to fat storage and I'm just, you know, my results are screwed for a day and I, you know, I lose out that day? Well, not necessarily. Um, I have put together a little bit of a strategy for what I like to call, what Danik and I call pre-party nutrition which somehow allowed me to get leaner through the month-long party period, holiday period that we just came out of, because, which is amazing because I was rubbing, man. I was piling down so much crap food in the evenings at those parties. And uh, normally, you know, I can definitely put on a couple pounds of, of body fat within a couple weeks pretty easily. I put on 10 pounds of fat in about one month of a honeymoon last summer that we had, which was so fun and so worth every pound. But this didn't happen over the holidays. It was, it was incredible. So I used some strategies I learned from John Kiefer, who invented what's called carb backloading. Uh, check out the websites in the description. The basic idea is to put the body in a state where it can process carbs extremely well, extremely quickly and efficiently. And there's two things that you do to accomplish that. Um, one is you deprive the body of carbohydrates throughout the entire day leading up to your parte. Uh, so for me, I mean, I don't stick to his protocol to the letter, but I'll still have my oatmeal in the morning, um, which I'll show you guys pretty soon, the recipe to that. And uh, I'll just reduce the portion of it a little bit. And then I'll have nothing but protein and fat throughout the rest of the day. So nuts and eggs and meat and stuff like that. And I also try to keep the portion sizes down a little bit lower than normal. So I'm just slightly under eating during the day. I'm not hungry because it's protein and fat, which fill you up pretty well, uh, but just a little bit less food than normal. And then the second thing you can do to get your body primed to take in carbohydrates and process them well is what? Any guesses? Pretty obvious. Exercise. Um, so I like to try to hit some hard intervals um, or just some real good conditioning work um, before a big night out rather than just strength work because conditioning work burns through tons of sugar and then your body's craving the sugar, craving the carbohydrates when you do take them in later that night. Back squats today, which I really enjoy, learned to love over the past few years, about the past couple years really. So I wanted to build up to a five rep max, and I hadn't done it in a couple months, five rep max. Last time I barely got 230. Pretty happy with how that 225 went up. And this is 245, first time in my life I've squatted it five times. It went up pretty well. It, it felt good, and in fact, I would have gone to 255 after that. I'm sure I could have gotten it, but my quads were just smoked for some reason. I was surprised how how burned they were, and I, I could have gotten through the fifth set, but I, I would have been sore for three days in my quads if I had done that. And I need my quads for the majority of my workouts, so that would have been pretty counterproductive and stupid. So I just stopped after the fourth set. juicy part of the pre-party workout. So I mentioned getting a hard conditioning workout and to burn a bunch of sugar, right? Well, this is a 15-minute AMRAP, which is CrossFit lingo for as many rounds as possible in that given time, so 15 minutes. I wanted to, wanted to really push hard, and so this is a, a two exercises, just strict pull-ups, as you see there, with a 10 kilo weight, so 22 pounds between my feet. I didn't know how many reps I was going to do. I just wanted to go and, and see whatever was challenging on the first set without killing myself. So I ended up with seven reps there, as you saw. And then 25 double unders, which I'm about to do once I can get started. There we go. Uh, so basically that equals one round, seven pull-ups and 25 double unders. And I just go around and around and around for 15 minutes, getting as many rounds as I can. So that's the first round, 45 seconds. See, I check my watch right there. I always check uh, the time after the first round, whether it's my clients or myself training, because it gives me an idea of the pace that I potentially can keep up if I'm totally fresh. 
So, for example, if I repeat that workout, I know that, well, if I burn through all these sets at that pace, then I'd get, you know, I could max out at this number of rounds or any given number of rounds based on that pace. But obviously, I, I can't come close to that here because I can't even finish the second set of pull ups without stopping. Best I've done double unders in weeks, months. <laughs>